in lesson five, we are going to take a look at splitting triangle sides with a dilation. We're going to be drawing some segments that are connecting midpoints of the sides of triangles. Go ahead and look at this picture and see if there are some things that you notice, some things that you wonder. Pause the video while you think and then come back. So they definitely told you that you've got midpoints, okay? So L, M, and N are all midpoints, so we know, whoops, that this is a midpoint, okay? This is a midpoint, and this is a midpoint. Even if they hadn't told you that, maybe you noticed that the markings would tell you that. So we see that this side is congruent to this one, this one is congruent to this one, and this one congruent to this one. So maybe you noticed that you didn't even need to be told that they were midpoints. You would have noticed it already or you would have known it anyways. Um, maybe you noticed kind of four little triangles, one big triangle. Maybe you wondered if all of these little triangles are congruent to each other. Okay, so those four little ones. Knowing that we're working with dilations, maybe you wondered if the bigger triangle is a dilation of the smaller ones. Maybe you saw these lines and you wondered if they were parallel. And maybe you saw some other things in there and wondered some other things. That's just a couple that you could have wondered and noticed. So let's take a look at that diagram, but sort of, okay, a very similar diagram, but only two midpoints. Okay, so we've kind of got this diagram here, two midpoints, N and M are midpoints. We're going to connect them, and then we kind of see this little triangle here, and then looking at this bigger one. So convince yourself that triangle ABC, the larger triangle, is a dilation of this littler triangle. Okay, that we could stretch this littler triangle out and it would land on that larger triangle. So think about what's the center of dilation and what would be the scale factor. So pause the video, think about that, and then come back. So on this, for the center of dilation, so it would be kind of a point that they share if we're just going to dilate this to make it bigger. So if we were going to stretch this orange triangle out so that it landed on the black triangle, I would say point A is the center of dilation. And then what would we think the scale factor is? So if we take a look here, right, we've got this marked here as congruent to this. So this orange triangle has one segment of this length. This triangle has two segments of that length. So this one is two times the size. So we would have to double that orange triangle. Okay, so thinking that the scale factor would be two, double the orange to make it equal the black triangle. And then thinking about, is that going to happen down here as well? And it appears that it will, right? Since this one is one length, whatever this length is, this one is as well. So AM is one of those segments. AB is two of those segments. So again, two times bigger. Feeling like that will be um, enough to say that it's a dilation. So what if somebody was like, I'm not sure. Okay, is that really true? So let's use the definition of dilation to convince a skeptic, okay? So here's the definition of a dilation. A dilation has a center P with a positive scale factor. It takes point A along ray PA to a distance that's K times further away. So here's A, right? It's going to go along this same line, okay, this ray. And this new point is going to be K times further away, whatever the scale factor is. So in ours, we have a center of dilation is A. So our center of dilation is point A with a positive scale factor of 2. Okay, takes point whichever one you're going to start with. So we started with N. So we're going to say it's going to take N along ray AN.
Okay, so N is gonna move along this ray. So the dilation of N is gonna move somewhere along that ray. Okay, until it is, uh, oops, let's name this ray. Okay, so along ray AN, connecting the center to the point that we're moving to another point whose distance is two times further. So the dilation will take it the same as the scale factor. So if we're saying the scale factor is two, it's gonna take point N two times further um, away from A than it originally was. So then N is. Okay, so did it do this? Okay, and that's what we talked about is it does take it two times further. So then N has moved two times further. And then same thing here, M will move along this ray to a point that's two times further. That point that's two times further away is B because we can see that whatever this length is, this is two of them, so two times further. Okay, so therefore triangle, that larger triangle, therefore triangle ABC is a result of applying a dilation with center A and scale factor 2 to that, uh, to that littler triangle, A, N, M. So we are able to apply a dilation, moving N along that ray two times further away would land on C, moving M two times further away would land on B, so then we do have a dilation. So what do we think for this? Is B, C two times bigger than A, N? or sorry, then um, MN. So let me get this out of here. So is um, this line two times bigger than this one? And why? So if we have a dilation, so we already know that ABC equals a dilation of, let me type this instead of writing it out. Okay, so we already know, okay, so we know A, we know we can dilate A and M by a scale factor of two and center A to get triangle ABC, right? That's what we just proved. Okay, so we know that, okay, which means this means that all corresponding lengths will be two times larger in the dilation. So NM, um, so NM dilated by um, a scale factor of two will give us BC. So BC equals two times its original length NM. Okay, so certainly BC is gonna be two times larger because those are corresponding parts. Okay, so that scale factor is gonna double every um, length. All right, so then let's take a look now if we change this, okay? So the difference in these two diagrams here, here we've got midpoints, right? So N and M are midpoints. So the lengths on either side of them are identical. So that's gonna force the scale factor to be two because the original has one length and the new dilation has two of those same lengths. Okay, so this larger triangle is double the size because of those midpoints. So what if we change and we don't have the midpoints anymore? Okay, so in this one it's saying M is two thirds of the way from A to B. So this distance here is two thirds of the total distance. Okay, so the total distance or like a scale of one. And then N, or sorry, N is also two thirds of the full distance. Okay, so they're proportional. Each of them are two thirds of the way. Where right here, 
Okay, N was halfway. M was halfway since it's a midpoint. So half of that total. So um, when we're taking a look at this then, so what can we say about BC compared to MN now? Okay, when we're thinking about the lengths. So how would these two compare in this one? So in, in our original kind of halfway, we said if we were going to compare MN to BC, so MN would be half of BC, okay? Or BC would be double and M was what we talked about because we looked at doubling it to get to the bigger one. So if we took this, we would multiply it by two to get to the larger one or to go backwards would have been half. So in this case, what is MN in comparison to BC? So MN would then also be two thirds of BC. So if it's gonna be proportional um, to how far each one is. So if this is two thirds of the way, then this would be two thirds of that side as well. So this is two thirds of the total. This is gonna be two thirds of the total as well. So why is it useful to prove that a shape is a dilation? What specifically does it tell you about the shapes if one is a dilation of the other? So then this would be that they're similar. Okay, their sides are um, proportional, meaning that they can be multiplied by the same scale factor. So if we know that it's dilated by a scale factor of two, we know that all of the sides multiply by two to get the new one or two thirds or whatever that happens to be. So in order to prove that something's a dilation by definition, we need to have the same center and we need to notice that um, the points are moving by a scale factor away. So that N will move out to C by the same scale factor that M will move out to B. Okay, so that that same scale factor is happening. Um, so then in this one, it's say, so then in this last part, if we go back to that kind of warm up, why are the small triangles in this image from the warm up dilations of the original? So we already looked at AMN, okay, but what about CNL going out to um, CAB? So again, because N can move twice as far away, so N can move double and would land on A, L would move double and land on B, okay, with a scale factor of two, center C, that would prove it's a dilation. Same thing with this one, okay, L would move to C, to C, L prime would move to C by a scale factor of two, M would move to A by a scale factor of two with that center being B. So similar idea here, so all of those little ones would be dilations, would be able to be dilated to the larger one scale factor of two. So if we take a look at your reference chart, get this written down, this is this like triangle side splitter theorem. It says that if G and F are proportional in nature on the side, they split these triangles up proportionally, these lines will be parallel. Okay, because then they're dilations, and we know that dilations take lines to parallel lines. So when we take and look at GB, okay, so this side divided by this side should equal this one divided by this one. If they do, it's a dilation, so then those two lines will be parallel. So no matter what they are. So as long as this one divides by this one equals the same as those two divided, those two lines will be parallel. And then lesson summary. 
So again, in this first triangle, remember that we had a scale factor of a half because these were midpoints. So they were halfway between, so we'd have to double it to get the larger triangle because they were halfway. So specifically a scale factor of one half versus if we didn't know, okay, what the actual distance was here. So these two lines were forced to be parallel because they're a dilation. So if these two lines are parallel, then wherever G and F land, we know these sides will be proportional. Okay, so if I take this side divided by this one, that will equal this side divided by this one, which is what it says right here. So those sides will be proportional if you see that those lines are parallel because then it's a dilation. So if a segment is parallel, then there is a dilation that takes it. So that would force these sides to be proportional.